uploading a logbook, a log file to Logbook of the World for the 13 Colony Special Event. And it starts right now. Okay, guys, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Ham Radio 2.0. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. If this is your first time to join us, click on the subscribe button below so that you can keep up with all the videos posted on this channel. Everything new in amateur radio. So this year was the first year I actually completed the 13 Colony Special Event. I got all 13 Colonies. I didn't get any of the bonus stations. There were three this year. Um, K2Z, I heard him a couple of times, and he had massive pileups. I tried to break through it, but I only spent like 20 minutes trying to break through it one time, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I've got, literally, I'm running 100 watts in a wire. So, um, hopefully Christian hasn't copyrighted that phrase. But anyway, so 100 watts in a wire. I didn't, I could have done it if I'd spent a lot more time on it, but I didn't. So, but I got all 13 states, 13 colonies, all the original 13 colonies of the United States. They each have a one-by-one -one call sign. K2A, K2B, K2C, and all those. If you get all 13 of them, you can send in a certificate. Send in this certificate. And then you get a a, uh, a special certificate. You send in a form, you get a certificate. Certificate goes on the wall. 13 Colonies event of 2019. So now, now that I have done that, and that is finished, uh, what I want to do is I want to upload that log to my logbook of the world. So, and you don't have to do that for the event. I have to send this piece of paper in for the event. But I like to categorize and submit all of the QSOs that I make so that I can have everything in my log, everything in my logbook of the world, and it all counts towards worked all states, worked all zones, everything else that, that I that I have going. So for this event, I use the N1MM logging program, which is right here. This is N1MM logger. It's free software. You can use it to log um, all kinds of different contests um, that it does different formats for. And then um, for this one, I just did the regular DX type database. because it's just a special event. It's not really a contact. I was single op, uh, all bands, low power, which means 150 watts or lower. Mode was single sideband CW, and I didn't use an overlay. And of course, there's my operator. It was just me since single operator. And then I went down here and I did file export. Export ADIF to file. And, of course, I've already done that, and I just named it 13col underscore 2019.adi. So I'm going to take that ADI file, and I'm going to come over here to my TQSL program, which you download from ARRL, Logbook of the World, ARRL.net. And um, once you have your call, you can, you can request, once you download the program the first time, you request a new call sign certificate. If you've never used ARRL prior to, um, in your life, if this is your first time ever to use ARRL, what they'll do is they'll take your address, they'll verify your call sign through the FCC ULS, so make sure your address is correct on that. They'll send you a postcard to your registered address on FCC ULS, and that postcard will have a PIN number on it. And then you go back into the program, you put in the PIN number, and that physically verifies your address. Now, once you do that one time, you don't have to do it anymore. I did that several years ago. I took a I scanned a soft copy of that postcard and I threw it away. Um, so I've got a copy of the postcard if I ever need it, but I've never needed it since then. Once you verify one time, you're good. If you move, change addresses, you'll probably have to do that again, but I haven't, I haven't ever done that. So we go back here to, um, so every time you change computers or get a new location or whatever you want to do, go in here and you go call sign, request new call sign certificate. It'll pop up this window and ask you all this stuff, fill it out to the best of your ability, and then um, submit it. And uh, about a day, about 24 hours later, they will email you a certificate, which is this right here. So you'll go to call sign certificate, load call sign certificate, which I did. That's my call sign certificate for my current QTH right there. And um, 
that right there and you open that, which I've already done, it'll show up here. I have station location in Grapevine and then it's ready to go. So now, now, now all I have to do is click here, sign a log and upload it automatically to ARRL. This here, open. It verifies this information here, which of course is correct. Yes. Start date. End date for whatever, whatever the log file is I'm uploading. Start date, end date, and click OK, and it uploads it to, log, to your Logwith World account, which are, is already in existence, and you're done. Now, you, can, you don't have to use N1MM. There's a lot of logging programs out there. Most of them will export to like a .adi file or a .log file or something like that. And uh, as long as you're using uh, um, a format that exports correctly, that, will, uh, that TQSL will recognize, then you just automatically sign it through your TSL pro TQSL program, and you upload it, and it populates Logwith of the World. I'm going to go over here and see if it's... Uh, I did this just a minute ago. That's why I didn't click on it just then. And I'm going to go here. So this is my Logbook of the World program here. I go to My QSOs. And I go to Query, Most Recent QSOs. And it's got K2J, which is one of the ones I just uploaded right there so it's in process of uploading right now but that is uh that is where you will see it so tell me in the comments who worked 13 colonies did you get all 13 of them did you get any of the bonus stations what modes did you use i used all single sideband i think it's a little bit more challenging to use single sideband than it is to use ready or cw i mean cw is challenging just because you got to know cw and you got to be able to copy fast but as far as hearing signals, as far as hearing the stations, it's a little bit more challenging to make voice contacts between my station and the receiving station and back to, to me again to where we both acknowledge the QSO on both sides, which, of course, you have to do that with CW also. But um, I don't know. CW works a little bit worse band conditions. So you got to have really good band conditions to make sideband contacts, um, which I think is fun. I think it's real fun. I think through this whole thing, I've decided I want to go ahead and start the process on learning CW again. That'll be fun. So tell me in the comments below who worked 13 colonies, what you think, how, much you, uh, how many you got, and um, let me know what mode you use. 73, guys, and we'll catch you next time.